Welcome to this lecture, how do concrete structures resist earthquakes? To make it possible that reinforced concrete structures behave well during an earthquake, a certain detailing of structures, and more in particular of the reinforcement, is required. In this lecture I will try to explain how this can be done. When a structure is loaded perpendicular to its span, internal bending moments will occur. These bending moments result in a combination of compression and tension stresses in the cross-section of the structure. Concrete is a material which performs well in resisting compression, but poor in resisting tension. That is why reinforcement is added. The reinforcement steel performs well in both resisting tension and compression, so when a single span reinforced concrete beam is loaded, the moment results in a compression force in the top of the beam, which is resisted by the concrete, and a tension force in the bottom, which is resisted by the reinforcement. This graph, with the relation between stress and strain of concrete, shows that the concrete behaves well in compression. The compressive strength is much higher than the tensile strength. This stress-strain relationship shows that the relation between compressive stress and the strain is partly linear, and that the strains increase more rapidly when the compressive strength is reached. Deformation control tests show that with a further increase of the strain, a decrease of the resistance of is found before ultimately failure occurs. It can be assumed that the relation between stress and strain in reinforcement steel is similar for tension and compression. The relation will be linear until the yield strength of the material is reached. After this, the steel will yield. The real behavior is such that stress will increase slightly with an increase of strain. For design purpose purposes, however, often a horizontal branch with no limitation of strain, as shown, is assumed. As discussed before, dissipation of energy is mostly used to resist the effect of extreme earthquake loads. Energy dissipation is possible when the structure undergoes plastic deformation, that is when the structure has a ductile behavior. Now I'll continue to talk about assuring ductile behavior in a reinforced concrete structure. It's obvious that energy dissipation in concrete structures will lead to damage of the structure. The deformation of a structure is related to the curvature that are present in the cross-sections. The deformation capacity, which determines the amount of energy dissipation, is related to the ultimate curvature that can occur in the cross-section. The ultimate curvature is found when, after yielding of the reinforcement, the compressed concrete starts to crush. Energy dissipation is possible because of the difference in curvature at the point where the reinforcement starts to yield and the curvature where when the structure will fail due to the crushing of the concrete. Deformation due to curvatures between the yielding point and the ultimate failure are irreversible. It should be noted that the difference between the curvatures where the reinforcement starts to yield and the curvature when the failing occurs, which stands for the capacity to dissipate energy, decreases when the amount of reinforcement is increased. So when the structure is made stronger by applying more tension reinforcement, its capacity to dissipate energy is decreased and therefore its behavior during a seismic loading can be worse. This problem can be solved when in addition to the tension reinforcement, reinforcement is applied in the compression zone of the cross-section. This reinforcement is named compression reinforcement. When compression reinforcement is applied, the ultimate curvature will increase significantly, as can be seen in the graph. When reinforcement bars are under compression, there is a possibility that buckling of these bars will occur. That possibility will increase when the concrete cover is damaged as a result of a repetition of ultimate curvatures. The buckling of compression reinforcement can be prevented by applying stirrups or links that tie the reinforcement to the beam. Research has shown that the behavior of concrete under compression can be enhanced when the concrete is loaded in compression in three directions, or when deformations in the directions perpendicular to the main stress direction 
are restrained. These circumstances are known as confinement. Due to the confinement, both the strength and the ultimate strain will increase. These increases will lead to an increase of the ultimate curvature. In concrete beams and columns, confined concrete can be achieved by applying stirrups. So deformations of the concrete section in the director pe perpendicular to the main stress will cause tension stresses in the stirrups. Due to this, confinement of the concrete is created. Ductile behavior of a concrete structure can be achieved when the moment capacity is reached. However, when a concrete structure fails due to a lack of shear capacity, it will not behave ductile. Shear failure, therefore, has to be prevented. This can be done by applying sufficient shear reinforcement, such as stirrups. Summarizing, it can be concluded that to make energy dissipation in a reinforced concrete structure possible, both compression reinforcement and stirrups are required. These requirements apply especially to locations where maximum moments and plastic hinges occur during the seismic loading. In a frame structure, those locations can be found at the end of both the beams and the columns. In this slide, we can see that in these locations significant damage will occur, such as wide cracks and spalling of concrete cover. All in all, we can say that reinforced concrete structures are able to resist seismic effects. Mostly, this is done by energy dissipation. However, it should be kept in mind that this will lead to significant damage to the structure. I thank you very much for your attention.